Friday the 13th Part 8 Jason Takes by Hand is kind of hated in the Friday community. I get to an extent why some people may not like this movie, but and they some of them might put this like dead last. But honestly, I don't think this movie is as bad as people make it out to be. I, I will I will say it starts off pretty shitty. I will admit it starts off kind of dumb. However, after a certain point, it gets progressively better, and I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it, but I'll get to that when I get to that. Keen Otters is one of the most fun parts of his Jason Runner where the scenes were in Times Square. He says that the spectaculars were lined up and down the block watching the film did not want to take the mask off due to show their illusion of Jason. He said that every once in a while he turned his head and looked at them and watched them go all crazy. Jason does take Manhattan for a little bit in this movie. So they had like a few days to shoot in New York, I believe. And the whole film was mainly shot in Vancouver and the film was mainly on a boat. Now, knowing what I know now, obviously Jason in New York would have been cool. However, the budget for that and for New York specifically would have been a lot. And they didn't have the money and most of the budget for these movies are like the low millions you know the one digit million so they did not have that money and budget to go to new york they had a few days there mostly shot in vancouver and you know i get if people were mad like the marketing was light jason does not take my hand and he's only in new york for like a little bit like the last 10 15 minutes and if you're mad at that that's fair so i didn't mind that honestly it is a lie though apparently keen hotter vomited on a cue in the final scene after drinking several pitchers of water and was not a special effect what kind of water is that it must have been nasty contaminated water in the diary scene jason throws a man in the mirror and is Ken who go on and play Jason and Freddy vs. Jason. For that scene in New York where he like throws a guy into a mirror. First of all, that guy's way taller than Jason. And secondly, I guess he he dies. Just be throwing a window by the impact. I don't know. I just thought of that death or kill to be kind of weird. I don't know if it's even a death or kill. This film is at a hundred minutes and it's the longest running time of any of the Friday 13 films. One hundo. It did feel long. I would definitely admit that. They're on a boat for a large majority. The writer originally wrote more of the movie to be said in New York. He had ran in the scenes at Madison Square Garden, Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, and the Empire State Building. But Paramount told him that the budget would not allow him to spend that much time in New York. So he was forced to rewrite the film and spend more time on a cruise ship. Helding says he agrees with fans who complain that not enough time was spent in New York given the title. Yeah. If they know that they didn't have the budget, I mean, just change the title, you know? But, I mean, it would have captivated, you know, a lot of fans. But, ooh, Jason New York, that's cool. That was funny. Many of the actors pointed out themselves Paul early in the film that they wonder how the ship got out of Crystal Lake into the Atlantic Ocean since most of them were happy to be in the film. They didn't bring it up to the producer directors. How does Camp Crystal Lake connect to the Atlantic Ocean and New York? How does that work? I need a map. And just, I don't know, someone who's good at uh, geology or whatever, please tell me in the comments. Like, how does that connect? I want to know. How the hell does that happen? But it's never explained. Just like with everything in this franchise. Oh, this is funny. Most of the cast had a Friday 13 marathon and watched parts 1 through 7 the day prior to the shooting. Their attempt was on making part the best one. And sadly, this isn't the best one, but I don't think it's the worst one. So either the disappointing results in the box office, Paramount had to sell the rights to a new line, mainly because they're losing money and they're going to go bankrupt. So if this one wasn't a success, they would have to sell the rights or they'll go bankrupt and they had to sell it to new line cinema. However, that makes the chances of a Freddy vs. Jason movie more likely. And this is the last feature produced by Paramount until 2009 remake. Only three other sequels were released in between so yeah after this movie they had to sell it again higher chances of Freddy vs jason which is what we got but kind of loses the name of friday 13. so laura park lincoln wanted originally wanted to sign to reprise her role as tina in part 8 but she wanted a higher salary however paramount told her that the budget could not afford to appear and so she turned out the part and then paramount decided to rewrite the entire script for part 8 take the movie to a whole new direction which is why none of the cast from the previous movie shows up it always seems like some uh, like the main protagonist from the previous movie wants to show up but it's always like schedule conflicts or just like money is always in the way for some reason except for tommy apparently in both posters for the movie were dropped following complaint from the new york tourism community i mean community i'm sorry because the both of the posters were too graphic there's one that says i love new york poster and it has jason holding a bloody knife okay apparently that was too graphic so comedian was like no take it down and they got the whole jason in the background poster with the new york lights okay it's kind of dumb thinking about it now i mean complaints are free that over fucking poster during the production many of the casting group being calling to be jason takes vancouver this is because vancouver double for new york and various scenes due to budgetary reasons as paramount refused to, bu to budget the extensive filming locations in new york except for two days filming in times square all of the scenes in the docks sewers alleys and diner were filmed in vancouver
Vancouver. So yeah, when they were actually shooting in New York and Times Square, it looked cool. Seeing Jason and Times Square looking up all the lights, you know, just being there was awesome. There's even one scene where he like kicks a bunch of, I guess, gangs like fucking radar thing and like say, hey, I'm gonna kill you, fucker. And he takes off his mask comedically and they start running away. That was a random scene that was just like there. But yeah, whenever he they actually shot in Times Square, it was awesome. And sadly, it wasn't the movie that we got. Oh, I didn't even notice. Apparently, there's plot holes that there's a like an extra kid that just went missing. I mean, it was probably due to you know time constraints and money issues. But you know, it's here that they try to explain like why is this one person gone, a missing kid. I get it, but it was again money issues, budgetary issues. Maybe that person wasn't there that day or could have been there. That actor, certain actor, or whatever, or extra. So I mean, I don't have a big. I, mean, I get why it's a, it's a plot hole, but I don't personally have a big issue with it. See that I also find hilarious was the subway scene where Jason's chasing Rennie and Sean throughout the subway, and none of the people there and pedestrians did anything they just sat there and watched which is what i would have done because i'm a horrible horrible person i find it funny that no one did anything they were being up as big watery dude oh i didn't know this apparently this is the only friday movie to have a blooper reel on the dvd and blu-ray wait so because i didn't rent it all of these movies but i don't own them on dvd blu-ray so parts one through seven doesn't have it and i'm gonna assume the later sequels don't have it as well weird why not have a little joy and laugh for your extras and bonuses so the renamed title or false title was ashes to ashes fucking Celine Dion have a double two or some shit what's going on here it should happen like years earlier the film grossed only 14.3 million dollars with a budget of 5 million at the time it was the lowest growing film in the series which looked at Paramount selling the rights so yeah apparently 14.3 million is low for Hollywood standards which is a lot for me honestly if I had that much I would cherish every fucking like penny of it honestly that with that much money oh I found this interesting this 1989 marked the second year in a row where entries from the big three slasher series came out in the same year so let's see it was friday jason takes my hand nightmare 5 dream child and halloween 5 the revenge of my of myers the first was in 88 with friday part 7 new blood nightmare 4 dream master and halloween 4 yeah it just really t goes to tell you how much they milk these three series and in, in the 80s back in the day they were just like are these big franchises let's just milk the shit out of them and they did into the ground just a random fact kelly who plays eve in this movie kelly who's a well-known you know her work for her stunts and stuff like uh, Corey got a fright uh, like on Arrow. She's China White, I think. What's her name? She's basically wearing has white hair. She's she plays that character. Uh, she does her own stunts and whatnot. Apparently, this movie is going to be over two hours long, and the director had to go cut some some scenes. I don't know. This movie already feeling the first half kind of being shitty and bad and kind of slow. Or in the second half, it's actually watchable and enjoyable. But two hours that would have been way too long for a slasher. Many fans dislike Jason's unmasking in this when it was deemed unconvincing and unintimidating. I honestly didn't mind it so in the sewers where his face gets melted it was a weak looking sort of prosthetic mask but i mean he was melting it was a bunch of goose so i didn't personally didn't mind that part of the movie near the end so apparently they intended for rennie the virtuous good girl to have a nude scene thus rebunking slasher norms in which slutty girls show skin but completely forgot to cast an actress who would agree to it so director repeatedly worked on wearing jensen daggett down pointing examples of notable actresses who had done it nudity without causing damage to their careers first he asked her to go nude she declined the baby just topless again she declined finally he requested that she at least take off her, her blouse off she still declined i mean they really want her to be nude i get it nude is sex sells you know it sells it, it just does but if someone if an actor doesn't want to do it they don't have to do it so it's gonna hurt for you know, declining and not giving in oh i gotta talk about this the one moment where everyone just talks about everyone will remember part eight for this one moment where julius is like a boxer or boxer in training he throws punches at jason slash kane hotter for exactly one minute and 16 seconds when they get to vancouver slash new york all of that one minute thing all one minute 16 seconds was worth it because he says all right your turn and jason just fucking knocks his head off literally and he goes Goes to the trash and it closes. That was worth one minute and 16 seconds of my life. Honestly, I was still awesome watching that. And the only thing people won't remember from this movie. And with back with the timeline, this film takes one year after the events of the prior film. So 2002. It definitely is not 2002, but apparently the tournament timeline is through 2002. And last one here, there's a dog in the movie, by the way, Rennie's dog. And apparently, so throughout the whole movie, I guess this is a segue to talk about the movie now. But where the main girl, final girl Rennie, she has a dog with her on his cruise ship, and she starts seeing these visions of little 
little Jason throughout the holes of the windows. And not only can she see it, but her fucking dog can too. Apparently a dog can see a fucking ghost or some shit. Like that was a weird scene. Oh, and I guess I'll, I'll mention it now. This is the film where they introduce teleportation for Jason. I'd forgot which one they introduced his teleporting technique because it's in the game. And I was like, when the hell was, what, what movie would it introduce? And it's this one where he just, he's in one place. So let's say there's a person running. I'll use the teacher, for example, the old ass uncle who, by the way, the, the actor cannot run because he probably hasn't done horror movies in a while and he's probably an actor in drama but he starts running away like horribly and jason's chasing him right he goes in the building and then you see him thrown out by jason in the building so oh it's like he's teleporting okay I, I just forgot that he was like teleporting and then in the cruise ship in that disco scene where he's chasing kelly who he's blowing from place to place within seconds it's like It's like, oh yeah, I guess he's teleporting. I completely forgot, but he is. So there are some decent kills here that I like. There's the sauna kill with faceless guy with the towel over his head and he's stabbing those rocks in his stomach. There's the sewage kill or like the bucket of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sewage or whatever. He dumps the old ass uncle in his fucking sewer thing with a bunch of dirty liquid. That was cool. And then, oh God, am I forgetting, forgetting one? Oh, I think there's a scene. Is there a scene? No, I'm thinking of a scene that's going around and around. Forget about that one. That's in Jason X, but you know, there's a few de decent kills here. And oh gosh, I forgot mention the opening the opening how he comes back is this these two couples they have sex and the electricity brings them back while having sex something it really doesn't matter he wakes up he looks very water i like the look of jason the mask is still somewhat the same but the look of him being wet all over his costume and clothes i didn't mind that he kills both of them he goes on his fucking cruise ship somehow he's on it because he's chasing someone it's not even about camp no more he's going to new york and he kills each one of them one by one and then while he kills a bit more after the mean girl or the bitch girl kill like tries to seduce the teacher after that and after she gets killed that is the moment to me where the movie turns around it actually turns to be a fun scene where a group of people on the ship is like oh we're gonna go kill jason it's like like a rally we're gonna go kill this motherfucker they do that a lot of people die people are jumping off being thrown off boats and shit the boxing guy he survives the well-known characters they get out they roll their boats into new york i don't know how that's possible but they get there there's a funny scene where jason looks at himself he's looking at me he sees a hockey match person he's like turns around that's a funny moment and then there's also another funny moment i think i mentioned it earlier but of those kids he takes his mask off just for the fuck it of, I don't know that's this random like scene he just did it just because why not he even saves Rennie at one point from these guys trying to sexually assault her and drug her he does that as well and then guess what we get another dumb ending apparently there's this big ass sewage and this old guy apparently everyone in New York knows this apparently where there's like a big chunk of water and waves coming down the sewer at certain times of the day and Rennie her I guess boyfriend I forgot about this boyfriend and Jason they get down there and they get in there just in time for the water to come by and swoop away jason and that's where his like body melts and everything his face melts and then it somehow turns him into a little Wait, how does it turn him into a little boy? Explain that to me, please, producers, director, actors. How is that possible? Fuck, does this thing in New York slash Vancouver come by, swoops, chase, melts him, and turns him into a little fucking boy? Another dumb ending. It's. Uh, is it as dumb as Seven? The whole father thing? Well, that's the thing. I think Seven is worse because the father actually defeats Jason and so called kills him. This one, he just does it to himself, or like the water does, or whatever, the sewage thing. But it's still dumb. And it ends with the dog coming back to her owner. Like, oh, hey, the dog is alive. It's great. And then they walk off. And Paramount was wondering why they were losing money and why people weren't watching. It's because shit like this. Dumb ending, man. I don't know why they thought it was a good ending. So, overall, Friday the 13th, part 8, Jason Takes My Hand isn't as bad as people make it out to be. And I think it's just okay. I don't think it's the worst. I don't think it isn't bad. It's boring and starts off shitty in the first half. But either the mean girl dies, it actually turns out to be a pretty relatively entertaining movie to me. So, yeah, it's okay. Next is the ninth entry. It will be Jason Goes to Hell the final friday it is the final one